We've once again reached the end of the week, and as has been the case in each of the last two Fridays, we're back with another installment of Your Take Not Mine, where I turn to you, the viewer, for some of your hottest takes surrounding the NBA world, and I give you my thoughts on them. Every Thursday, I send out a tweet on Twitter along similar lines to the one on your screen right now, where I ask you to reply for a chance to be featured in the video. So if you don't already, make sure to go follow me on Twitter at Hoops Reference for your chance to be featured in a video in the future. If you also also want me to make a community post here on YouTube for a chance to be featured in the series, if you don't have a Twitter account, let me know down in the comments and I might do that in the future. Before we start though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, as all support is very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first take we'll be discussing comes from JD3, and he says that Anthony Davis is a better player than Giannis Antetokounmpo. When it comes to the playoffs, you will never see a more drastic set of overreactions regarding great players when they get eliminated in disappointing fashion. Giannis Antetokounmpo was on another level all season long in the regular season, averaging 29 points, 14 rebounds, and 6 assists per game, while being the driving force for the Bucks, finishing with the best record in the entire NBA. Because of this, he rightfully won both the MVP award and the Defensive Player of the Year award, which is something only Michael Jordan and Hakeem Olajuwon have ever done previously in the last 35 years. So obviously, when you join that level of company, the expectations for you to perform in the postseason skyrocket. Without question, Giannis disappointed in the playoffs this year, finding himself down 3-0 in the series against Miami before getting injured and missing the elimination game. Giannis was slowed down when the Heat packed the paint, and for an MVP winner to falter that hard, he rightfully received criticism. But now, going back to the take at hand, despite all of that, Anthony Davis is still not the better player. You have to remember that Davis has the fortune of now playing alongside LeBron James, which makes his life a lot easier. In New Orleans, when Davis was the top dog, they regularly missed the playoffs, and he only led them to one playoff series win total, in his seven years there. Giannis may have more of an obvious flaw with his perimeter shooting being so lackluster, but his strengths very much outweigh Davis's, and he did win both MVP and Depoy for a reason, so objectively, Giannis is still definitely the better player in my opinion. The next take we'll be discussing comes to us from Ryan, and he says that the top three best passers in the NBA are Ben Simmons, Nikola Jokic, and LeBron James, and the crazy part about it is that none of them are point guards. Before we get into this further, I think the fact that this is even a conversation demonstrates how far the talent of the league has come and how versatile and skilled players are today. Players today can be any size, shape, or mold and play a plethora of different roles on a team, with big guys handling the ball more and acting as playmakers, and guards crashing the glass hard. None of these three players mentioned are traditional point guards, with only Simmons playing that role in the technical sense, but still operating both as a big man and ball handler on both ends of the floor, yet they all possess elite passing ability that makes those around them better. Whether or not these three are the three best passers in the league is tough to say though, because there are plenty of other players that deserve to be mentioned in the conversation. Guys like Chris Chris Paul, Rajon Rondo, James Harden, Luka Doncic, and Trey Young, amongst many others, all deserve respect in this category, so I can't necessarily say I agree or disagree with Ryan, but it is fascinating to think about nonetheless. The next take we'll be discussing comes to us from Read Your Books, and he says that Rajon Rondo is the third best player on the Lakers. If someone were to say that statement during the regular season, you would genuinely be looked at like you had three heads, because he was really bad for several stretches over the course of the year, and honestly, Lakers fans grew tired of him at times. He didn't seem to fit alongside LeBron James because of his inability to shoot the ball, at times he struggled mightily on defense. He he commands the ball too much for a team with LeBron and Davis looking to operate, and his impact statistics all indicated he was a negative. However, the difference between regular season Rondo and playoff Rondo is as night and day as it can possibly get, and I legitimately don't think a single Laker not named LeBron or Anthony Davis has had a bigger impact on the success of the team throughout this postseason run. When Rondo starts to go all out, he's capable of making some game-changing plays on both ends of the floor 
floor, and the brilliance of his basketball IQ shines through on the biggest stage. Throughout both the Rockets series and now the Nuggets series, Rondo has come up clutch time and time again, knocking down surprisingly timely jumpers, taking defenders off the dribble and finishing at the rim, snagging steals and creating fast break opportunities, and creating easy shots for those around him. Rondo is at his best, and he's so fun to watch right now, and in the playoffs, this year I actually agree wholeheartedly that he has been the third best player on the Lakers, as crazy as that may sound. Our next take comes to us from Jay, and he says that Jalen Brown will have a better career than Jason Tatum. Tatum has been hailed as the next face of the franchise and pegged as a future superstar since his rookie season, and oftentimes Jalen Brown does get forgotten about. Understandably though, Tatum is a phenomenal player, particularly as a scorer, and his ability to create his own offense and make tough shots look easy is the kind of trait that all of the best players have. Plus, this postseason, Tatum has definitely been the the better player. He can admittedly go cold for stretches as we saw in Game 4 against the Heat where he went scoreless for an entire half, but he got going in the second half and the Celtics almost came back. Brown, on the other hand, does a lot of his work in more low-key fashion, putting up solid numbers more quietly. The Celtics are 31-11 and 11 when Brown scores over 20 points in the game. Which is pretty notable because his success on the offensive end does translate to success for the team. When he's assertive, the Celtics play their best basketball, but he gets too passive at times. Both players are strong defenders, they're very balanced and versatile, but ultimately I do not believe Brown has the brighter future than Tatum, but they both have incredibly bright futures nonetheless. And finally, the last take we'll be discussing today comes from Yankee Season, and he essentially said that the Heat are overachieving right now, and their role players will regress next season, so if they want to continue to contend, they should trade for a star. The Heat are on the verge of making one of the most improbable finals runs we've seen in a long time, and the driving force of this run has been the young guys stepping their games up and producing at a high level. Bam Adebayo holds everything together in the middle, Duncan Robinson's sharp shooting spaces the floor for the playmakers, and Tyler Hero has broken out as an incredibly dynamic scoring option off the bench as a rookie. Dragic does turn 35 years old next season, so worrying about how much he has left in the tank is a valid concern, but one thing that he clearly didn't take into account is that the Heat will have a ridiculous amount of cap space in 2021, so not only can they land a big name via free agency, but they can also keep all of their assets who will only continue to improve as they gain more experience and naturally develop. The Heat right now have a terrific balance of youth and experience, and I don't believe they have to move anybody to remain competitive for years to come. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think of the topics discussed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.